This video is a full breakdown of everything that happened in the episode and what you can expect from the series altogether. You definitely don't want to miss this. Episode 2 of House of the Dragon takes fans six months into the future after Rhaenyra was named heir and Daemon left the capital. Rhaenyra Targaryen, Princess of Dragonstone and heir to the Iron Throne. Rhaenyra is still settling into her role as heir to the throne while her uncle Daemon has moved to Dragonstone. Daemon has always been reckless and self-serving, so it's not surprising that he disobeyed his brother's command. King Viserys ordered him to go back to his wife in Runestone. You are to return to Runestone and your lady wife at once. But instead, Daemon moved to Dragonstone, where he dubbed himself the prince and true heir to the Iron Throne. Daemon feels nothing but contempt for his wife, Rhea Royce, mainly because he never agreed to their marriage. Like most marriages in the Game of Thrones universe, it was arranged. Daemon refers to himself as the Prince of Dragonstone because he knows full well that the title is reserved for the heir to the throne. Daemon seems unbothered by her visit and even invites his brother to attend his wedding to Myceria. However, the king has his own matters to deal with. In episode 1, Viserys' master of ships, Corlys Valerian, warned him about the trouble stirring in the Stepstones, a chain of islands that stands between Westeros and Essos. Corlys warns the king about a threat to the Stepstones known as Prince Admiral Kragas Drehar, a.k.a. Crabfeeder. A man called Kragas Drehar has styled himself the Prince Admiral of this triarchy. They call him the Crabfeeder. His attack on the Stepstones has already cost Corlys one of his ships and his men. Corlys has a lot to lose if Crabfeeder continues. Having control over the Stepstones has helped the Valerian become one of the richest families in the realm. Corlys tries to make the king see the threat Crabfeeder is, but the king does not see it that way. The council meets with the king to discuss the situation, and here you can see Rhaenyra serving her role as the king's cupbearer. Corlys and the council meet with the king again, and once again, the lord of House Valerian urges the king to take action against Crabfeeder. I want to seize the Stepstones by force and burn out this Crabfeeder. The king is trying to avoid a possible war. I am not prepared to start a war with the Free Cities. Which is, as Lord Beesbury mentions, will result in several deaths. The series decides to send ships to two of the Free Cities, Pentos and Volantis. I've sent envoys to Pentos and Volantis to see if we might find common cause. However, the king still does not see Crabfeeder as much of a threat. During the meeting, Rhaenyra makes a suggestion, but she is immediately shut down by her father. You have Dragonrider's father. Send us. It isn't that simple. She has spoken out of turn, which is not customary for a future heir. As heir to the Iron Throne, she must learn when and when not to speak. When Crabfeeder appears on screen, he has a scar and a broken mask. The original books never fully described Crabfeeder's looks, so everything about him was created for the show. In the six months that have passed, the Lord Commander of the Kingsguard, Sir Ryan Redwin, has passed away. The former Lord Commander appeared in the first episode, but died of natural causes during the six-month time gap. The Silent Sisters, a group of women who serve as morticians in the realm, have collected Sir Ryan's body to perform the appropriate rituals. The sisters did not appear on screen in this episode, but they did appear in the first episode of Game of Thrones, where they prepared the body of Lord John Arryn for his funeral. The king sends his condolences to House Redwin as he welcomes Sir Harold Westerling as his new Lord Commander. Sir Westerling's promotion has left an empty spot in the King's Guard that needs to be filled. The members of the King's Guard are the seven of the finest knights in the realm. These knights are tasked with protecting the royal family till the very end. The series places the task of choosing a new knight on the shoulders of his young future heir, Rhaenyra. In the end, the knight Rhaenyra chooses will be her personal guard. The princess is presented with seven knights in the courtyard. The Hand of the King, Sir Otto Hightower, has handpicked the knights from various houses in the realm, including Caron, Malister, Corbray, Rowan, Craig Hall, Parley, and Cole. The knight for the House of Cole is none other than Sir Kristen Cole, the same knight that bested Damon in the tournament six months ago. Of all of the knights presented, Sir Cole is the only one who does not have a bannerman, a detail that shows his status as a commoner. Chris Tun's father was a steward at Blackhaven to Lord Don Darien. Rhaenyra stands in front of the banister and gazes down at the selection of knights. You can also see Princess Rhaenys in the distance watching the whole thing. Rhaenys is known as the queen who never was because, like Rhaenyra, she was a candidate for the throne but she never became queen. She is the only one in the realm who truly understands Rhaenyra's situation. Later in the episode, Rhaenys tells Rhaenyra that her dreams of being queen are unachievable. As she puts it, the men would rather burn the realm than let a woman ascend the Iron Throne. Men would sooner put the realm to the torch 
and see a woman ascend the Iron Throne. Rhaenyra ends up choosing Sir Cole as the new knight, believing him worthy because he is the only one there who has experienced a real battle. He fought during the Dornish invasion, and Rhaenyra believes that his experience makes him more suited to fill the empty spot on the King's Guard. Although chances are that this isn't the only reason she chose him. From the first episode, it seems like there might be some romantic feelings between the young princess and the valiant knight. When Otto tells Rhaenyra that Sir Cole may not be the wisest choice, she remains adamant about her decision. Rhaenyra may be young, but she's proven that she's not going to let anyone control her. After the death of Rhaenyra's mother, Emma, she and her father have spoken less and less. Alicent tries to fix their relationship by speaking to each of them and advising them to talk to each other. Rhaenyra opens up to Alicent and she tells her that she wants to be seen as more than just a little girl. She believes she was not chosen for the role of heir because she was capable, but rather because her father wanted to replace his brother and she was the only option. Her status as heir to the Iron Throne is also on rocky grounds because of the small council is advising her father to remarry and produce another heir. Corliss suggests his 12-year-old daughter, Lena, as a possible wife of the king. He and Rhaenys believe that this is the best way to display the strength of the kingdom. They meet with the king in the gardens of the Red Keep to discuss the situation. If the king were to marry Lena, it would unite the Targaryen and Valerian households, the two strongest houses in the realm. The series and Lena take a walk through the garden where the young girl presents herself as a flawless potential queen. Their entire conversation is very awkward for obvious reasons, but their marriage is supported by the Grand Maester and Lionel Strong, Master of Laws. Otto, on the other hand, is not too happy about the potential union, mostly because he would rather the king marry his daughter, Alicent, instead. Politically, Lena would be the better match since she comes from the second most respected house in the realm and also has Targaryen blood. During Rhaenys and Rhaenyra's conversation, the queen who never was reveals that she is not in support of her daughter's marriage to her cousin Viserys. She also tells Rhaenyra that she has a slim chance of ascending to the throne. While Otto prepares to leave for Dragonstone, he tells his daughter to seduce the king. Alicent is incredibly nervous about the whole thing and picks at her nails to help with her anxiety. She also did this while talking to the king during the episode and in the first episode during the tournament. The episode also shows Viserys' end drawing nearer. His finger seems to have developed the strange unhealing disease that appeared on his back in episode 1. The king unfortunately does not have time to focus on his ailment because it was revealed that his brother had stolen a dragon egg. Damon is confronted by Otto and members of the Kingsguard who try to make him return the egg but fail to do so. Rhaenyra arrives and she manages to retrieve the egg from her uncle. However, her father is not happy about her decision to confront her uncle. Before the episode ends, Viserys announces that Alicent will be his new wife. The entire episode was filled with lots of twists and turns that set up the war to come quite nicely. With Rhaenyra now left feeling betrayed by her father's decision to marry her friend, in the episodes to come, fans will learn more about each character.